Oh boy. The uh, post office really bunged up this box here, so I'm hoping that what's inside isn't damaged, because if it is, my video for the week is gonna be really, really screwed up. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. This week, doing something pretty different, something I have never done on this channel before. I'm going to assemble and paint up and modify an MDF kit. This is something I have never ever done. I've never worked with MDF kits before. It's not my thing. So this is going to be a very interesting experience. Now I wanna say up front that this video is sponsored by War Cradle Studios. They reached out to me and asked if I could review some of their upcoming MDF kits, but I'm not really doing unboxing reviews very much anymore. So I said, nah, I'm not really interested in doing that. However, if you instead wanna send me one or two of them and I'll just build it and modify it and make that a video, then I'll do that. And they were totally into it. So they sent me this box. I don't know what's inside of it. I feel like there might be more than one kit. Well, I'm gonna open it up, assess what's here, build one of them, make it look as cool as I can. But I'm gonna share all my experiences with you, all the good, the bad, the ugly, the warts, everything. And I think I'm the perfect person to do this because I don't build MDF kits. I can't sugarcoat this. This will be my first experience working with these which is a pretty good indicator of what it might be like for you if also you haven't worked with MDF kits in the past before. One of the main reasons I agreed to do this is because the pricing on the kits was really reasonable, or at least I thought it was. Like, like I said, I, I don't deal with MDF kits, so I don't know how they compare to others, but when I looked them up, the kits were priced at like eight British pounds to like 14 British pounds, so that's, you know, 15, $16 American for a kit, which seems really, really reasonable. This isn't a super expensive thing that, you know, only a limited amount of people could do. So yeah, I'm hoping that this will be a pleasant experience and that I can make these look cool and that they're a viable alternative to scratch building stuff. So let's take a look and hope they're not smashed because this box sure is. All right, look at this. God dang, postal service messing up my stuff. All right, this is a lot of pieces to punch out. Oh, okay. They sent me a whole bunch of stuff. I'm really glad that each one of these is an individual kit. For a moment, I thought all of these had to be assembled into one thing, and that would have been a bit intimidating, but here it actually looks like I'll have some options, which is nice. But this windmill is the one that really catches my eye. This is something I probably would have a hard time building myself. Doing a windmill out of foam would be tricky. It's the kind of thing you do want to build out of wood, maybe balsa wood. This kit's already got all the basic structure, nice and durable. I think this is the one I wanna, I wanna make. It's gonna be the hardest one, probably. Looks like it's got a lot of finicky pieces, but I think it's the one that's the most useful to me. And I think you could do some cool stuff by putting some cloth on this. And yeah, let's do this one. Now, if you guys wanna buy some of these, I kinda forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video, I will put a link to a shop where you can order these, pre-order them from a, game supplier in the UK. That's the link that they gave me to use, but they said, you know, basically buy them wherever, check with your favorite local game store. They may stock them. Basically any store that stocks that Wild West Exodus game should hopefully be stocking these. So shop around, but I will put a link where you can buy these. I'm an old man, so I printed out big full copies of these instructions so I didn't have to view them on a little smartphone screen. A couple of things I'm noticing on these instructions immediately. Nothing is numbered. None of these pieces are numbered. I'm hoping things are straightforward and obvious and there's not a lot of pieces that look the same to screw up. I don't know if this is typical of MDF kits or not, but since there's no numbers, 
I think I'm going to start by popping out all of the pieces. There's no reason to keep them in these sheets if there's no numbers, right? So let's do that. On second thought, that might make it really hard to find pieces. I think it's actually smarter to keep them in here so I can easily browse them, so to speak. So let's find the starting pieces and get to work. All right, we start with this. Yeah, these pieces are all slightly different and not numbered, so I have to pay attention to the picture. I will say I would have preferred if they were numbered. It's a bit like assembling Ikea, where you have to really pay attention to the pictures. I went to the art supply store yesterday to buy a new tip for my airbrush, the one that I broke. And I'd never been in that store before, and they had a lot of cool stuff. One of the things I found is this precision bottle, which I thought might be really great for PVA glue when assembling small things like this. I get the feeling that an experienced kit builder might have a different order of operations and might pre-paint some of this stuff ahead of time, knowing how it's gonna go together and how difficult it's gonna be to paint certain spots after, but since this is my first kit, I don't really want to go that route because I have a feeling I could cause myself more harm than good. I'm hoping that the way this kit assembles, there's an opportunity for pieces to dry while moving on to the next steps. These pieces don't snap together super tight, so I really need this glue to set up. I'm not sure if this will be a good idea or not. Hopefully that elastic holds everything in place nice and even while this glue dries. I got one page of these instructions done, one little platform. So far, so good. I will say immediately that I was expecting these kits to snap together a little bit tighter than they are, so they're a little bit more delicate and fiddly than I was expecting, but I very well could be using a glue that's not the most appropriate. It just seems to make sense to me to use PVA glue for this. I gotta continue on here, get the rest of this kit built up, and I do not have nearly enough memory cards or battery life to record all of that and time lapse it. And I want this video to mostly be about painting and finishing and embellishing these things. I'm just gonna use the mighty video clap and uh, make this thing done. <laughs> that went better than expected. It actually didn't take too long at all. I spent the last hour or so putting this thing together and it went pretty good. It was pretty intuitive. My only real complaint is that none of the pieces are numbered and there are a few spots where there's pieces that are very similar, but slightly different. And if you use the wrong one, you're kind of hooped. Just got to take your time and pay attention to what you're doing. This thing would be a nightmare to decorate as is. So I didn't actually attach all of these pieces. I kept things separate in big, chunks so I can have some semblance of sanity as I try to decorate and paint this thing. This will make it a little bit more manageable. There's still going to be some tricky spots. In this set there's also some little crates that you can pop out and build but to be honest I wasn't that interested in that. They're gonna have all these joints and I have better looking crates but it's a nice little bonus. There's also a little cart here which is kind of cute. Again, I have some nicer looking miniature carts than this, but it's nice that they have that. There's also some little miniature crows that you could pop out and place on this, but they're going to be two-dimensional flat 
birds. So I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to focus on this building. I think that these could just be painted and they would look pretty decent. The laser etching is nice enough for some of this. You got the shingles, you got the wood grain. I would like to see more wood grain and more details, but man, this was like a $16 kit. You can't really expect too much more. The spots that I'm going to focus on making look better are the little stucco areas, this plaster, because that's a really easy thing to work in. That'll really make this thing look better. On the bottom here, this stonework, I don't know how it's going to look painted up. There's these big gaps where the pieces connect that don't really look that believable. If you really wanted to go the extra mile, you could coat this in styrofoam bricks or something and really make it awesome looking. I don't want to go that crazy. I want to see how these paint up and be kind of true to the kit. But I am going to fill in these gaps here with some kind of material so that it looks like at least grout lines in the stone and not like big gaps. The woodwork, I could go in with a Dremel or something and bevel some of the edges to make it look more rough and hewn, but there's just so much of it that I don't think I wanna do that. I think it's better just to leave it as is. One thing I don't love about this, but I mean, it makes sense, is that it has this rope or chain on the pulleys. Considering it's MDF, it looks pretty decent, but I think I'm gonna cut this off and replace it with a bit of chain or something, because that'll really make it look better. First things first, I'm gonna attack all of this plaster and anything else I wanna do before priming. Staring at these pieces last night before bed, I decided I really needed to fix them up a little bit more. Originally I said I wasn't going to go through and carve all the edges of the timbers, but I did. I just, I think it will really help sell the effect of the timbers and make it look less like an MDF kit and more like something scratch built. And that's a big concern for me with this, is I don't want it to look like an MDF kit and I also want it to blend in with my scratch built stuff. I don't want it to look really, really different. One of the places it is gonna look different is the wood grain on the planks. When I scratch build, I make stuff out of foam and it's really easy to get wood grain with the wire brush, nice fine wood grain. With this, they have some that's laser etched in, but it's really minimal and not even remotely similar to how I do the stuff myself. So I went in with my X-Acto knife and tried to scratch in some finer wood grain this was really, really difficult because everything was all assembled and it's hard to do continuous strokes. It really never looks right when you're trying to do it around pieces. Would have been better to do this pre-assembly. I'm also not sure if it's even gonna show up once painted. It's pretty minimal, so it might just vanish. It could cause me problems making the MDF swell when I get into washes. I don't know, it might look awful, but I figured it was worth a try. There was also some weird pieces on here. I don't know if they were supposed to like represent rope or what, but I just, 
It didn't quite look right, so I snipped those out. I also decided to add my own door handle. There was one on here that was laser etched in, but obviously that was flat and didn't have any dimension. So I used a mold that I had previously made from my own sculpt and used some UV resin to quickly make a little door knocker that I could glue in place. I'm also pretty sure I'm gonna end up covering this base with individual foam bricks. The etching on here looks perfectly fine and for a quick paint job, it would look good. But like I said, I want this to blend in with my own builds. So I'm gonna add that after. It's gonna be a pain, but I'm gonna do it and I think it'll look pretty cool once I do. But I am gonna spray paint this first because I have to really get in here with the spray primer. I can't safely spray from a distance and I don't wanna melt that foam. So I'm gonna do that after. I'm just gonna prime everything with flat black primer. Brown would be a better choice. You don't have to tell me in the comments, I know. It's just that I use what I have and right now all I have is black and white. So black it is. Nope, <laughs> this was a mistake. I greatly underestimated how difficult it would be to get in here and place these bricks. When you're doing something like this, you need to have pretty clear access to glue and cut and place the bricks. Even after the second row, it started to become impossible and I realized there's no way I'm finishing these. But I've already kind of messed the factory stonework up by hot gluing and gluing onto this so i'm stuck with it my idea is to say hey this thing just has two layers of big heavy foundation stone bricks and then i'm just gonna cover this with some more of my texture paste and try to make it look like it's just concrete or plastered it's a good idea right <laughs> I'm starting to get really excited about how this is going to turn out. Now that everything's primed, I can see kind of how it's going to look and I think it's going to look awesome. The stonework here took a bit of finagling. It really didn't look right with just these layers and then the plaster. So I kind of messed around, added another thin layer and then some sporadic bricks. So I kind of cheated it to make it look like there was bricks going all the way up and the plaster had kind of crumbled away. And it was a little bit tricky, but I think it works. Again, it would have been better if I had bricks all the way up. I would have needed the foresight to apply all of that before assembly. At this point here, I'm thinking all of the wood grain I added will probably actually work pretty good. So I'm excited about that. I also went onto the little roof here and added individual shingles out of construction paper. The MDF etching that was on this looked pretty darn decent, but I figured if I was making everything else more dimensional, I might as well do these shingles as well. And adding the little three-dimensional doorknob here, door knocker, I think was a big help to 
selling this piece and making it blend in with my other ones that use the same door knocker. Now I can actually start painting this thing and I'm gonna use my usual wood painting technique of basing it with a golden brown then dry brushing gray and doing black and brown washes. I bought a new tip for my airbrush so that I can use that to get in all the little nooks and crannies and this time I'm gonna forever remember not to separate these two pieces and break them. Just clean it like this because this is an expensive piece to replace. I also, while buying that at the art supply store, found this golden airbrush paint in a perfect color for wood. So I'm gonna try this out, see how it works, see how it compares to the other miniature paints that I've been using. Well, the airbrush was certainly fast and easy to do on these, but it kind of had a negative outcome that I didn't really consider. My normal wood painting technique is to apply a golden brown, very watered down over top of black, and that kind of blends together and creates a really dark tone that just has some golden sort of hue highlights to it. I don't know, it works really well, but with airbrushing, it applies a nice coat on top and fairly dry, which means that it really colored these that golden brown like that's an airbrush <laughs> putting on a nice coat but I don't know if it's going to look right on this piece because it's going to look too new but I'm going to continue with my dry brushing and my washes and hopefully it kind of just works out. Holy moly, yesterday was quite the marathon of painting. This thing was a lot more involved and intricate to paint than I had anticipated, and it took me way longer than I thought it would, which is why for the entire day of painting, I just kind of had my head down in it and was powering through and didn't even take the time to change camera angles like I usually do, so sorry about that. This thing is a lot more intricate than the stuff that I normally scratch build. There's a lot of nooks and crannies that are difficult to get to and difficult to paint, and I did not do any favors to myself by airbrushing this thing with the golden brown. That technique of golden brown over black only works if it's watered down and brushed on so that it dries kind of translucent and dark. It did not work with the airbrush. Also, this paint, turns out it's a little bit glossy and that made the following steps a lot harder than they needed to be. When I bought this stuff, I was trying to see if it was glossy or flat, but it does not say anywhere on the 
bottle or at least nowhere that I could tell, which is strange for an art supply. And I was just hoping that it was matte or flat, which it is not. That meant that all the other layers didn't apply very well. And I ended up doing tons of like gray dry brushing and washes and dry brushing and washes to try to get this wood looking right and looking kind of old. In the end, it worked out okay, but it took about five times longer than it needed to. I should have just airbrushed it gray and then done a black and sepia wash and been done with it. And that would have worked much better. I'm not totally in love with how some of these metal pieces look. They're okay, but I think they could be better. I am happy with how this little bit of chain on the crane here worked out. Now the only thing really left that I have to do is apply some cloth to the windmill. I guess I don't have to. I could just leave this like this, but the paint on here, I don't really like it. And one of the most appealing things about this kit was the idea of having some tattered cloth on these windmill, what are these called? Spines, sp fans, I don't know. But I think it needs some tattered cloth. So I gotta figure out how to do that. Paper towel is a lot stronger than toilet paper and I think it would hold up a lot better. The problem is the paper towel I have has a pattern on it as it often does and that doesn't really go away when you're doing this sort of thing. Something like blue shop towels or brown shop towels would work. They have no pattern but I don't have any so I think I'm gonna try toilet paper. This is a little bit risky because toilet paper is so much thinner and more fragile that I could be asking for problems. I don't know how this is gonna go. I've never done anything exactly like this before. And I'm sort of thinking that any kind of tatteredness can be added later. Maybe let this stiffen up and dry. This part looks very strange. I don't know if I want to cut it or rip it. I think maybe let's rip it. Rip some of it. Something like that. And I'm going to see this one through before I do all of them in case this idea doesn't work. I'm going to take a little bit of water. I'm going to add some PVA glue. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of brown wash, some Agrax Earthshade. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use this Burnt Umber ink, just because it'll be a little easier to get it in the bottle with the dropper. I think I want this to be very minimal, because I want this to end up looking like it's white fabric that is really aged. I don't want it looking like brown fabric. Not sure if the color is quite right. Could maybe use a little bit of black in here. You know, I always get comments and messages from people saying, will X work to do Y? Can I substitute this for this? Can I do this or that? And half the time, I don't know, because I've never done it. And the answer is always, try it out. Just mix them up and give it a go. Because I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're doing it anyway. I'm thinking it looks pretty good. I'm just hoping that it dries hard enough to hold up. It doesn't have to be rock hard. It just has to be durable enough. And I guess if it rips a bit more, it's not gonna matter too much. It'll just add to the look. I think we can actually add some more rips to this. Give this thing a more tattered appearance. One thing I have to be really mindful of is the direction of all the hanging bits. I don't want them to all hang in different directions because then it'll look really strange when it's seated in one position. These ones are going down, so not everything will have to hang this direction. That looks pretty darn good. I just gotta let this sit to dry so everything can hang down and drip and hopefully stiffen up enough that this thing will hold up. In the meantime, I'm gonna clean up a little bit here and add a few little weathering details, a little bit of moss on this, and then it'll just be a matter of attaching this once it's dry. We're almost done. Just gonna use some Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass Fine Turf mixed with a bit of PVA to create a paintable moss. 
This is my favorite way to do it. All you have to do is brush it on and let it dry. Looks a little bit strange while it's still wet because you see the glue. That glue will dry clear and you'll be left with just the foliage and it looks pretty darn good. The ratio of effort to look on this technique is about as good as it gets. Oh, well, I guess I gotta glue that again. That's a bummer. Oopsies. All right, I think that's enough. I'll just let this dry and see how it looks. And I can always add more if I want. What can I say? This thing looks absolutely friggin' Awesome. I am really pumped with how it turned out. It This kit far exceeded my expectations. To be fair, my expectations going into this were a little bit low because I'll admit I have a bias against MDF kits, or at least I did. I always thought they looked kind of cheap. They always looked like an MDF kit and I kind of thought they were cheating versus scratch building and I was wrong about that. This thing allowed me a ton of creativity a lot of scratch built elements. I was able to make it look like it is a 100% original and make it blend in with the stuff that I have scratch built. And it was easy to work with. I can't believe how good it actually worked. And the price is really, really cheap. Like I think this kit was is 16 British pounds. It's pretty good for the skeleton of something that you can build off. I would have a very difficult time building this from scratch. And if I were to build it, I'd have to do it out of a lot of balsa wood, which would probably actually cost more than the MDF kit and take way longer. So I gotta say thanks to War Cradle Studios for not only sponsoring this video, but for actually forcing me to do this project in a way and kind of get over that bias that I had. I, I'm really glad that I did. I could absolutely see MDF kits being a regular part of my hobbying for the types of buildings that are difficult to scratch build or that I don't want to. If you want to grab one of these kits or check out the many others that they have available, I will put a link in the video description to a store where you can buy them online. But they also told me to let you know, check with your local game stores. They may be stocking them as well. They have, I think, six different kits available in this line, this kind of medieval sort of looking stuff, but they have tons of other stuff too. And what's neat is that for every kit that's available, they also sell a ruined version for a little bit cheaper. So if you wanted to have one of these with a toppled over tower, they have that. Pretty great. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and let me know in the comment section below. I really think this is a nice merger of sponsored content that was still beneficial and informative and creative and cool. And I don't know, I enjoyed myself. So I hope you did too. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own hobbying, check out my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca. It has links and explanations to all the stuff that I use regularly. If there's something you're wondering about that I use, it's probably explained there so you can get the exact right thing. If you enjoyed this video and the videos that I make each and every week, one way that you can help me keep making them is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It's through the support there that I'm able to dedicate a whole bunch of ridiculous hours to building tiny houses and filming it and sharing it with you guys. It's a full-time effort. That's one of the main reasons I can do it. So I encourage you to check out the Patreon, join the fellowship. You can get access to my private Facebook group and my Discord server. And that's where you get previews of stuff like this in advance. Get to talk to me, ask me questions, all that good stuff. Anyways, that's it for this week, guys. Can't believe it. I've changed my views on MDF kits. I like changing my views on things. It's important to change your views on things once in a while. Have a good weekend, guys. I'll see you again next week. Cheers.